Hey, so we're going to show you some uh, really cool, a really cool technique you can do if you have focal dystonia or cortical smudging. What? What? <laughs> what are those things? So focal dystonia or cortical smudging is an event that happens when you sort of get that claw feeling in your hand, like ah, I'm I'm stuck and I can't move. Writers get this; they call it writer's cramp. Uh, texters get this; they call it texters cramp. <laughs> so. Um, and this really can happen anywhere in the body. Uh, it can be, uh, you can have an extreme version of this where there's an actual uh, neurological problem that is with you for a long time, or you can have um, just occasions of it. So it can be a little scary. So all of a sudden your hand is stuck and it won't move and you've got to just sort of extend out in order to get it uh, to open up. So the problem is not in the hand itself. The problem is in your brain. So on the outside rind of your brain, the cortex, yeah, you have this area. So if you were to wear a, a headband or headphones with a band, right about that area, you have this map on the outside of your brain of every part of your body. It goes from one ear to the other ear. <clears throat> so you can picture your body sort of laid out as a map over that entire area. Your hand is part of that map, and it's a very bright, detailed part of that map. And um, like we said, every part of your body is mapped on, on that part of your brain. We're going to concentrate today on the hand itself. So the idea here is that we want to make that, um, the parts in that map differentiated and help it to work right. Because in cortical smudging or focal dystonia, what happens is the neurons in that part of your brain that fire or are associated with firing the different muscles in your hand all fire at once because there's a confusion in your brain. In other words, a, the map gets blurry in your brain and your brain goes, ah, I don't know what to do, let's just fire everything. And so you get this crampy sensation. So let's take your left hand as an example of this and we'll work with, uh, if you're actually, if you're left-handed, <clears throat> use your non-dominant hand. For this so work on your right hand. Uh, Zach and I are both uh, pretty right dominant so we're going to work with our, our left hand. So take your pointer finger of the opposite hand and begin to just trace around the outside of the hand as if you your hand were a drawing and you were just trying to trace that drawing. And we're going to go several times. You can just come across the wrist in front. There's no like, you know, rules about this. The idea here is you just want to be intensely interested. I'm going to say that again. You want to be intensely interested in what you're doing and just map every part of the hand that you can. Okay. And then let's do another different little map here. We'll go from the wrist with your fingernail of the pointer finger on the opposite hand and just draw a line straight out to the tip of each finger from the wrist to the tip of each finger. So as you do this and hopefully you're doing this along with us at home, just know that you want to be in a safe place while you're doing this because uh, you might look a little silly doing this in public. I'm not against that, but yeah. Good, we'll do that again. So just a straight line out through each finger. Notice the color of your hand or all the colors in your hand. There are many. Notice where the shadows are falling. Notice the size of your hand, the temperature of your hand. Okay, then let's do the, the back of your hand. So, so palm down. And same thing, from the wrist, just draw a line out each ray. If you want to make the tendons that you're tracing more defined, you can sort of put some tension into your hand. 
It's not necessary to do that, just something you could do. Again, noticing temperature, noticing colors. Look where the shadows are falling. Think about size of your hand. Great. And then one more time, palm up toward the ceiling. And you're going to do that tracing around. We've been joking because this is kind of like a when you were in school and you traced around your, your hand to make the turkey. <laughs> Good. So now we just want to see how our map is doing. So maybe just rest your hands on each knee. <clears throat> you might close your eyes for this. And just notice if one hand feels a little larger than the other. Probably the hand you did the mapping on feels larger in your mind's eye. Really it's your sensory motor cortex. The temperature might feel different. It might feel enlivened or vivified. So the circulation might feel different. Then if you start to move your fingers around, flexing and extending each joint, you'll notice a difference in the joints, probably. So the joints might feel more open and fluid. And then if you start to pick things up with each hand or manipulate your environment in some way, put your hand on your face or wherever, do different things, you're going to feel like the hand that you mapped just moves more efficiently and more fluidly. This is not a profound feeling, it's very subtle. But if you do this on a regular basis, you might solve your problem of the cortical smudging or the focal dystonia. You may get less cramps in the hand. And uh, it's just really good work for your brain. And by the way, if you have any sort of arthritic feelings in your hand, this is good for that too. So that's our mapping of the hand. Uh, stick with us and we'll show you how to map other parts of your body.